I'd like to welcome our speakers, Matt Hocken and James Stewart. Matt Hocken is a fourth generation family farmer from the Manawatu. Matt farms a thousand dairy cows with his family at Collerton. In 2018, he completed a Nuffield scholarship focusing on innovation in agriculture. On the back of that, he and James founded the Rural Innovation Lab. James is the managing director of Stuart Dairylands on the boundary of Palmerston North. James farms over 800 cows and his family has been farming the same land for over 120 years. They utilise data, technology and good management techniques to minimise their footprint. I'd like to welcome you guys up. Hi everyone, I'm Matt Hocken. I forgot my, you're on that one. Thanks for coming along. Uh, stiff competition for, for a crowd, although there's a big crowd in today, so that's great. Um, but thanks for coming along to our session. So we're going to talk about the Rural Innovation Lab, uh, initiative James and myself and uh, four other farmers from around the region founded in 2019. So first up, uh, this is a, a photo of Fifth Avenue, New York in 1900. And as you can see, there's lots of uh, horse and carriages going down the down the Fifth Avenue. If you're very good, there is one car. You know, I can spot the car. Yes, if I just point it out. Did anyone get it? Prize. <laughs> Go milk James's cows. Um, <laughs> That's the car there. So there's one car, lots of horse and carriages. This is 1900, so you know, not that long ago, really. Um, we kind of forget. Um, we heard about disruption. So um, this is 1913. Spot the carriage there. That same street, Fifth Avenue, New York. And I think there is one horse and carriage there. Again, if you've got sharp eyes. But anyway, there's lots of cars. Uh, as you can see there, um, probably weren't very comfortable cars looking at the, the wheels and so forth, trundling down the street. But the, the main thing is over 12 years, a dozen years, had a massive change in uh, transport. And uh, for farmers, it was a big one too, because uh, the US and around the world moved from hay fueled transport to oil fueled transport. About millions of acres of um, land in America changed from producing hay for horses and had to find another use. So it was about 25% of the US's agricultural area um, was, was for hay for horses and had to quickly change. There's actually, I did, I did a Nuffield and I uh, did a bit of research on tractors and horses here in New Zealand and there's a similar sort of change over about a 10 year period where tractors just went crazy and our horse numbers went slowly down. So um, disruption, you know, people think of disruption, technology, fridges with, you know, shiny things all over, but that's quite a quick disruption there um, in a mechanical uh, change of technology. So um, who are we? We're the Rural Innovation Lab. So we, um, we started um, from an event in Agri-Food Week in 2017 actually called uh, Agri-Tech Hackathon. Um, at the time I was, I was in Federated Farmers as the uh, Manawatu Rangatiki uh, Provincial President and Matt was my dairy chair and we were very interested in um, you know, just growth in the region. We got involved with the Accelerate 25 program that was happening. Um, and we went to an event in the square and it was hosted by Microsoft and they were looking at um, disruption. Basically, I think they put up a slide like the horse and cart one, didn't they, Matt? Might have stolen I think, so. I think you stole that, but, <laughs> but we'll take that. Um, they also talked about technologies, real time sort of um, things that are coming our way. Um, and when we quiz them about, have they been talking to farmers about, about this, they said they've been talking to Fonterra. So we sort of said, we'd better come back on farm, have a look at the ground level and, and talk to a few farmers. So these guys did take up the challenge. They came out to our dairy shed and um, had a look around. And we, would, we really had real synergies on our thinking about um, opportunities with technology and innovations. And it was quite interesting. Um, the, 
some of these these guys from Microsoft um, came over for the hackathon, and uh, we were talking about some sort of camera system, and they were talking about a balloon thing, and um, they sort of made it up on the spot in the dairy shed there. About a few, or about probably a year later, Bill Gates has got this balloon thing, and they'd invented something from that discussion. So it just shows you how quickly um, things can really get done if you put your minds to it. So we founded ourselves as a Rural Innovation Lab in 2019. We um, heard about this um, fund, Shane Jones was giving a bit of money out, and um, we put a pitch to him, uh, put a pitch to the government, and we got some seed funding to launch Rural Innovation Lab, and it's basically um, owned, well, led by farmers, run by farmers, owned by farmers, and we just wanted to be in that innovation tent, but instead of being talked down to, so tech down, it's farmer up driven. So we want to, um, yeah, really have, we're the ones ultimately using this stuff on the ground. So we want to have a, a say in how it, how it comes out. So what do we do? We do three things. Uh, so the Rural Innovation Lab engages in innovation projects and we'll talk about a, um, one specifically and, and perhaps reference a couple of others that, that we're working on. So we work with partners. As James said, um, there's lots of you know, great technology out there, um, people doing good research and science. What we aim to bring is the, 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 the ground up the farmer, the basic the use case for those things um, and make sure that we play a part and have a seat at the table and the design and development um, and, and, and ultimately the rollout of things for farmers and growers. So we've got a uh, farmer and grower network. Uh, we do a number of events. We've run digital boot camps on a whole host of issues generated from what are the challenges, what are the problems that farmers face. We have also do a, an annual muster, which is quite a big show. Um, and our vision for that is that farmers are coming there um, in droves and actually wanting to engage with these things rather than it being something that you know perhaps it's a bit fearful technology or or um, running new things on our farms we're actually in there driving it um, and speakers often you go to these events and beef and lamb do it very well so they but you have you know some flash people talking about technology and the farmers are all out there we want to have the farmers talking about it, obviously with the with the technologists too um, and then we do we have a smart farm network so um, across sheep and beef, dairy, horticulture, so we're across sector and we've got smart farms set up so they're all um, mapped out digitally and we've you know, worked with those, those people to understand what it means to be a smart farmer and essentially it is, you know, what's a smart farmer or well, anyone who puts up their hand who wants to trial new ideas, technology on their farm, has a capability to do so, is, is okay dealing with digital things. Um, so that's, that's what we do, we do tech trials, um, and it's really sort of ground truth thing, what, what perhaps a model or what a new technology is, is providing. All right, and so, um, oh, yeah, here we go. This is just a, a bit of stuff we did over the first year, and I think one of the big things is there is the engagement with our farmers. So we ran these digital boot camps, we called them, um, and coming along and, and just seeing the, um, the passion from the farmers you know, wanting to to get ahead, and I think that last session downstairs was really quite quite interesting, and and it sort of was a good segue into this. Is you know what what's happening around the world is changing the disruption, the um, but we we need to be able to do it on the ground, and that's what we think um, that we can offer. Um, it's it's such an important um, part that the producers play, and we we really want to be up with it all. So um, farmers, yeah, big engagement with farmers, messy students. Um, what's some of the other big things there? Um, sorry, I haven't seen this slide for a bit. But um, so yeah, it was a very successful um, first year. Um, and that was that was helped through that initial funding from the PGF. So So we've done some, some good work with partners. James mentioned um, a, a few there, uh, Microsoft, Massey University, um, Ag Research. So um, got Seth Lawrenson and, and another one talking about Hyperfarm, which is an ag research um, project which we've provided um, farmer and grower input into. Um, 
One of the things MPI are really interested in, in talking with us about is um, they get plenty of good ideas, you know, from people coming. How can they ground truth, or how can they get good engagement with farmers? So we got an invitation from MPI Director General Ray Gore to attend um, some accelerator or some sector accelerator workshops in Auckland and in Wellington. Uh, one of them was around, or what came out of one of them was this concept of a digital twin. Has anyone heard of a digital twin here? Great, there we, we got go. one <laughs> We got one, a couple two. You, get, we go. you get to milk up my shit, yeah. yeah. She's in the tent. So, um, so it'll be a new concept, and um, to be honest, we haven't actually talked to, to farmers um, about this um, in, a, in a wider circle yet. So we're going to do a little exercise with you, but, so keep your mind open for that one. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, a digital twin, perhaps if I just, so really, re really that slide is to say, um, digital twins have been used um, in perhaps in a factory setting or another setting. Essentially what it does is it's, it's a, you've got a physical twin, so a physical twin would be, your, the physical part is your farm. A digital twin is really a model of how that farm works with, with inputs and you know, data inputs into that to show, um, you know, that might be a scenario planning tool for your physical farm. It might be to kind of control and work out where your productivity gains or, or losses are happening. It might be, you know, it might be a nutrient to, to show those kind of things. And it can be um, a good way to tell your story about your farm. Um, using a digital thing and perhaps where you're going. So, um, so, th so that's, a, that's, a, that's a digital um, twin and that's being worked on by, um, we've had discussions with CRIs around that and so people are working on it from quite a, quite a broad perspective. So you know, when Melissa Clark Reynolds talks about from the consumer back, so looking at what the digital twin is that encompasses the supply chain from the consumer through to the farm gate and what are all the steps and, and how does that, that work. It's actually quite a big concept. Um, talk about a, f a few things here. So it's, it's a model of the physical thing. Um, you can use it to control or, or make decisions on your and monitor um, your, your physical twin. Uh, there's, you know, you can bring in analytics, um, different things, and and you can, yeah, kind of if you start thinking really sort of technical, then it's some of the artificial intelligence as you throw more data into these things, and it can become predictive for you. So if you get a weather event, you've got grass covers at this level, you can start to see, you know, where, you know, what sort of stock you can carry through or not. Um, obviously weather events keep coming on, so it's not a one, one shot thing, but you know, it can start to provide predictive um, decision making. And yeah. it's a place to, sorry Jane. And, and believe it or not, um, we will get uh, really good connectivity one day, um, and we will be connected to the world in a, in a lot better <coughs> position than we, we've ever done before. So why not use that opportunity um, to use you know, that Con connectivity to make sort of decisions, um, not only for compliance, but for opportunities, modelling, um, locking in with sort of um, weather forecasting and things like that. So what do we what do we want to do? Broad out, broad statement of the of the kind of topic. So digital digital twin projects, project outcomes. So we want to catalogue the state of the art on farm using existing RIL smart farms, which are across sectors. Catalogue the skill requirements and costs to develop a pilot. Um, and then catalogue the benefits of a digital twin beyond farm environmental plan compliance. So as I said, digital twin is quite a big concept and um, you might use it for, for quite different things. But one of the things which is obviously hitting us you know, smack in the face at the moment is the farm environmental plans. How do we how do we do that? And you know, our strong belief is that there's going to be um, it's obviously a, a risk risk base, but there's there's some data inputs which are specific whether you're a high you know technology farm or a low one that are in place. We can map those out. We can actually start putting those into a digital twin framework. We can see where we need to develop further. But it creates a it creates a um, kind of a, a layer that we can all, all buy into and, and we can use and develop if we um, we kind of feel like we need to move beyond a just a paper based thing where we're going to be 
we may probably my greatest concern as we get to 2024 and government says no we don't like what you've done <laughs> you know you've all gone your different ways you've got to do this so uh, we want to we want it we want to um, create a create a future platform for the sector most broadly and uh, we want to trial and, and show some things that can work from a farmer level so we're going to complete prototyping of um, FEP digital twins for, for dairy, um, sheep and beef, and, and horticulture. Right, so now it's activity time. Oh, is there any, any questions at that point? Anything that uh, was not clear? It's probably a little bit. And, and acknowledging we've got two people that have um, been exposed to this before. But um, we've got some smart people and this is the Ag Innovation Conference. Uh, so what we thought, hopefully everyone's got a, um, a bit of um, a pen and some um, little post-it notes. So we'll just stop now and if you could write down the three things. So you've got a digital twin on your farm, acknowledging James's point. We've got the digital infrastructure to, to make this work, okay? So don't be limited by what, what the current thing is now. What would, be the, what would be the three things that you would like to have on your digital twin? And think of it, you know, is it something that you would like to communicate to your team, to your customer, to your society? Is it something you'd like to measure? Is it something, um, is it something else that we have? What, what would be, if you had a, you got your physical farm and you could have a digital twin of it, what would be the highest priority th three things that you, you would, you would uh, have in your digital twin? Maybe it, it might stop a bit of duplication on um, some of the compliance stuff that we deal that, with. That's another one too. So if we have, if we have information you know, that we've collected together, then we can give you know, access or provide information to three or four different people without having to redo it all. We'll give you five minutes for that. And look, if you want to talk about it, or you've got to, if you want to, sorry, I did, I did ask if you want any questions. Nobody put their hand up, so we moved on. But if you've got any questions on that task, I, yep. How does it differ from what we're talking about in Hyperfarm? Yeah. yeah, so Hyperfarm, uh, yeah, be, Hyperfarm. Should be. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. We, we think they've got a great thing there, and they could they could really take. Uh, th there's um, a really good s it's scenario, particularly scenario planning, or or not sorry, not scenario planning. Um, change of change of land. Land optimization. I think that's their yeah, tool that's right. is where they see the best value for that land, and and this is ma hyper farms also mapping a bit of. Um, I think um, nutrient and greenhouse gas stuff with scenarios, so planting and uh, mapping that out a bit. So it's very similar. So um, look, this thing's um, not a cheap exercise to build a digital twin. So you know, with our CRIs, you know, getting together and pulling resource together. So Hyper Farm's got a lot of good components that would go into it, but I don't think it is the digital twin at the moment. Right. So the digital twin is something bigger. Than yeah. It, well, yeah, it, yes, it should be a lot bigger. For instance, um, does it lock in, uh, link into the consumers? You know, like, um, you know, we talk about blockchain, all these, these, you know, when I look at a digital twin, I look at some farming, and my kids on the computer farming from a computer. Um, they're doing a whole lot of stuff there, but then it's a lot bigger than that because then there's a whole chain going through to the to the consumer. So there's a whole lot of compliance, there's a whole lot of tools around, you know, tools and opportunities, um, modelling. So, yeah. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, hey, I was going to maybe suggest, are there a couple of examples that you guys have? Yeah, we might we might focus everyone's thinking on that though, Laura. I yeah, did think, yeah, I did think about wanna, that. We'll give yeah. an example with anyone. We've given a so few I'd, little... So I'd like to keep it... <laughs> yeah, come on, Laura. Test yourself. <laughs> yeah, I won't do that because I did think... Oh, think we'll think examples, connectivity. But... I think if you've got connectivity and you could measure or monitor over the whole farm, what would be kind of cool? Maybe it's your water leak in your high country. You're trying to find so, that leak. 
Yeah, so, but probably to, to Laura's question, um, if you, yeah, so you, you, you have your, your physical farm, which you're making decisions on every day, you, you're doing your planning. If you could, if you could have a, a digital twin of that where you could uh, represent, tweak, scenario plan, or, um, you know, a bit like what, what they're saying with hyper farm, do, do different land use change or so forth, what would be, what would you think would be the most interesting, the top three things that you would like to do? Um, so I'll give you five minutes. Uh, Down to about three minutes. Three minutes. So you got. <laughs> right, you got, there we go. You got. Make it. You're quick. done. <laughs> you got three three minutes to write your top three down, please, and and talk with your neighbours, brainstorm. Don't don't uh, have to do it by yourself, or, or if you want to by yourself. Sorry. <laughs> how, we got, how long we got? We got. Sorry. Get, get your attention. Oh, speak here. Can I, can I just pull, pull you up for a second? Uh, so have we all got three things down on their bits of paper? Good, well done. Great crowd. Uh, so if you could circle your top one and then just stand up for another three minutes, a short time again, turn around to your neighbours, so the one in the front, turn around and talk about your top one. See if there's any um, similarities or or you can further, you know, kind of elaborate what your thinking is on it. So if we could just circle your top one, your top priority, stand up and, or maybe groups of four or five if you haven't got somebody directly behind you. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you.
Are you alright? We'll wrap this up. If everyone sits down again, please. Yeah, I know you're enjoying this stretch. I'll start start naming some people. Margaret Cavalis, can you sit down, please? <laughs> Margaret Cavalis. <laughs> Okay, Ryan, that was good dis good discussions. Hopefully it was not just, you know, how's it going? And <laughs> how's things on the farm? But um, no, it's good good to good to engage with, with people. And so what I thought, if we could just, we're not going to have a chance to give everyone a, a chance to say it, but if uh, maybe if, we could, if we've got the opportunity for two or three and Simon's going to take us out the back and do something bad to us if we don't give time for questions. So we're going to leave some time for questions as well. So... <laughs> Um, <laughs> so um, perhaps maybe from this, if we're thirds, is right? Area from, does somebody want to say what their priority was or that they discussed? What was the discussion from this? Well, this the, main, the main discussion was grass growth and grass quality. As to what's in it, you should be seeing it as a way to be analysed yep. to find out what is in it and then correct the differences. Yep. So, so the so the point over here was monitoring grass growth and quality. So I guess that. That's how much you've got, you know, where your nutrients are that, that grow it, and understanding that well. So that's it's probably a, production and quality well, theme for it. Yeah. Any, any other quick ones from here? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I've, I've got an interest in sheep, and, and therefore, I think as, you know, we're totally reliant on them to produce what we need to live, eat, eat whatever. Um, more. Uh, individual tracking of animals to understand behaviour, welfare, health, um, all of those things that, that I think we'd learn a whole lot more about if we actually track them 24-7 rather than just sort of seeing them for a few minutes every day or two. I think we'd learn a lot. Yep. So everyone got that. So that was tracking of, of animals, particularly sheep in this perspective. So, you know, where they're going, what they're doing, animal welfare and, and you know, productivity of, of, of movement. Okay, awesome. The middle third, I'll say this bit here, this side of the pillar, is there any there? Oh, uh, Bob was pretty much just on stock fat covers over different time periods, e.g. summer, spring, autumn, winter, pretty much just correlating, you've been able to correlate that data and look at it right then and there when you go onto your web page or whatever it is, how you've got it formatted out, and just be able to say, look, the, I could put so many of this on that country at this certain time, but as soon as I go past this date, the feed starts going off or something like that, so we can, you know, just monitor, keep, being able to keep good condition on stock even though, well, you know, and Hawke's Bay at the moment, there's not a lot of grass and shit around, we're farming dirt, but, you know, we've still been able to keep a bit of condition on stock and it's just goes hand in hand, we've been able to know when to move them and just give them something fresh and new and stuff like that, and we could be able to get that all on something where we can read it and, you know, it takes into account rainfall and all that to be able to predict. Um, what you can grow, um, but where you don't have to flip through your old diaries and whatever, like my old man used to do, and all yeah, that yeah. And yeah. put it all there and then try and re rewrite it back out to how it's going to apply to you now. Cool. I think that everyone is a very clear speaker. Everyone got that? That's good, thank you. Uh, this third, there we go, we've got a hand. I was going to say, is there a way of using it as a connection with people as well and recording health and safety and that sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and one, one way to think about a digital twin is that there's, that things can be plugged into it, you know, so there's good health and safety apps that can, that can be plugged, plugged into it, and, you know, farmers, we want the best thing, so we don't want something that does everything half good, we want the best thing of this, the best thing of that, and so that's, that's the, the beauty of it, and, you know, there's whole lots of um, data layers and things like that that need to be worked through to enable that to happen, and that's, that's a big challenge in itself, but, yeah, that, that's, that's a good driver. I just had um, so a couple to be on the farm gate, like farm auditing and that feedback to the processes. I'm not sure if that kind of can be, and then that EID traceability, you know, feedback from through the supply chain. Yeah. Yep. Most definitely. Cool. Um, one I had, and it's, uh, it's not so much a, it's a bit different, but it's a simplicity of input. Um, you're getting the top end of farmers in this room who will probably embrace this sort of technology, but the next 60%, the middle 60% are going to struggle with even the concept. 
So there needs to be there needs to be a simplicity of input so that it's nice and easy for the farmer and you can understand it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, it's a great point. Yep, yep. And that's yeah, that's that's one thing for our approach. So we're actually looking at what what are the data inputs that we can provide from a you know just as you say the sixty percent you know what, what's what's actually available and and then you know build on that. So there's a range there, and where where could we take it? Or you know, so it starts starts there. So it's um, good, it's got to come from the farmer friendly way, and I think that's what you're saying. Uh, they're writing out you, how many people are writing checks now, you know, and you know it was quite daunting for for a lot of people that are quite traditional to to switch to internet banking. Um, I remember when I brought out my first cell phone and someone said to me, oh, even farmers have got phones, cell phones now. Um, you can do a lot with a cell, there's hardly any farmers without a cell phone, you know, now. My old man still uses the old flip top, and te but even he can text now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we better give some time to this, this third, the left, left, third. Yeah. We, we had a discussion about virtual fencing. Yeah. Great. Down, yeah, Laura. Um, I was just thinking on the cocktails of what um, I over there said, just even within our little trio talking about examples, and I keep, you know, converting basically your feed budget into being able to um, model what your cut and split would be um, when it's sent off. And so I was mad, and then we we're talking about, you know, basically converting drone to data, especially on um, when you can't get out the back all the time, and then the key, you know, through in a barrier with water. <coughs> A tangible example might be you've got a purpose built sh tiny little shed with a sun trap, the drone's in there, uh, the your zephyr meter or whatever picks up when it, the wind's um, calm enough for the drone to simply rise up, have a look, survey around at your grass, relay what your feed budget is versus actual, then you can have a mixed virtual reality kind of tour or a, a you know a, a modelling image oh, that comes through and shows you what weight your lambs are going to be by, you know, in a month's time, then that's sent through to the processes or whoever, or your draft or whoever it is, and you can have, you can get an idea of what your price is going to be based on, you know, so it's linking in the different, the information across all your different um, service partners and just having, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly across the value chain, so I guess it's just, yeah, we went, we went neat level. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And, and you raised some good points about where the value is created as well. So, you know, where the, to, to have that sort of planning through the supply chain um, is, a, is a huge thing. Um, yeah, and it's simple for farmers. It's all there. You just yeah. need that outlay of having the systems in place around how you're going to access that data and how you're going to, you know, utilise it as you, as you go along. And it is on your cell phone, it is, it's all there. Definitely, yeah. okay. Right, so we've got five minutes. Uh, we've got a couple more slides, but uh, what we'd rather have your questions, actually. Um, do you, there's a question. Quick question. Um, collaborations versus duplication, like upstairs, so we can hold the farm now, um, and there's lots of other talks today about, I'm sure everyone's got your MPs on the brain and things. Um, so how is the rural innovation being Collaborating or building on all the other things instead of duplicating using other. Do you want to cover that on me? Yeah, look, um, and, and we've got a, a call with Ag Research tomorrow, but we've been working with Seth upstairs, um, planted food last week, and they're all recognising that farmers are often left out of the loop. Like we're, they're talking high level, and we're bringing a level that's on the ground using this stuff. So um, we don't want, I hate duplication, I, you know, and, and what we've got is that passion of how will it work for us. Um, we've got all these challenges, we're looking at opportunities and using these CR, CRIs around, especially here, they're just over the, they're over this side of the, of the city, we're, we're really excited to work with them and so, yeah, we're strictly against duplication and working together. So we, but we bring that, that we're ground truthing it, and we're bringing that ground level. Does that answer it? We've got another, another question. Another question.
So just a, um, just an example of the Bill Gates sort of example I gave you, a lot of these people just don't actually understand what we're wanting to start with. And so when we did the original hackathon, it was like getting these techies out on farm, they were, they were just buzzing out because they're out walking the land and actually talking to the users and going, hey, we can do this, you know, and we, that's what we were saying, how? You, you can't, well, yeah, we can do it, it's a challenge. So you set the challenge down, they go for it, but we've got to push it to work for us rather than being always thrown down. We get sick of being talked down to, really. Um, just probably one last question, so... Um Go over. Oh, I was just going to ask you, you work with other, like obviously there's probably other farmer groups who've created similar rural innovation labs around New Zealand. Do you work with them or do you have a network that you're all, will you take this in a national level as well? Yeah, we keep getting asked that question by by funders and so forth. So, and we've we've actually got a call this week with um, another group down in Ashburton who are you know have got a similar kind of concept and, and values and so forth. So that there is there's definitely people out there doing this, and even you know overseas, you know when I went around, there's there's people overseas doing things which are very very much the same. And so that's. Um, Getting that network together, sharing the ideas and colliding the ideas between them um, would be really powerful, and that's that's what we'd like to do. They, they're, it's how that model works. Kind of, we've started here because we've got um, you know some some passionate farmers across sectors. It's a really good place to, to do that, and some you know a lot of horsepower across the river and and you know around and, and a real city and that's interested in, in what we're doing. So it's kind of the that started here. The energy's here. Um, and then it's how we connect that up um, around and, and create that national network and, and I believe should be internationally networked as well. Awesome guys. Um, so, yeah, just like to thank Matt and James um, for sharing your, um, your digital twin initiative with us and, um, and your great work to help, it, help rural innovation, um, uh, to help with rural innovation within the agricultural sector. Um, so. uh, please accept uh, you know, Matt. Thank this you. This gift to James. And we'll get a couple of these for you. So oh, uh, beauty. Biggest paycheck I've had all year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be nice. Um, if you guys be around, be around today, floating around, so any, any questions that, that you need to, um, to do, if you see these guys floating around, we might be able to Ask them something, or, or or look them up on the on on the website and that, and, and get in touch if you've got anything else to get on with. Um, we'll be heading into our second pick and mix, so please move to your designated rooms properly. Next route, next up in this room is Professor Steve Morris from Massey University and the use of Wiltshire's to reduce farm costs. Silks, Silks Lounge, where the day started with Sam and Sophie Hurley with Honest Wool. Um, utilising nature's wonder products and spreading the goodness of the wall. Upstairs at the, Mar the Martin Fielding Room is Steph Honey on navigating and changing global environment. So, yeah. Could I, could I, so, sorry, sorry, yep. could I just, just ask one more thing? Uh, just on your way out, if, you, if you're happy to, leaving your ideas, your post-it notes just on the table over here. So we are doing, we're, we're working with, so this is happening and we want to have farmer input. So if I go over there, table if you put your post-it notes down there thanks it would be much appreciated. Cool. Can we just have a round of applause? Thanks guys.